Welcome to CAE Pilot Podcast, a podcast that brings together aviation professionals to discuss life as a pilot, training, and career advice. You can find us at cae.com forward slash CAE Pilot dash podcast or subscribe to our show on your audio podcasting platform of choice. You can also find our video podcast on our YouTube channel. Good morning, Roxanne. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on the CAE uh, Pilot Podcast. Um, this is going to be the third in a series of podcasts we've done on um, different types of flying that uh, pilots can do. We've already spoken to a cargo pilot and to a business jet pilot. And um, now we're thrilled today to be speaking to you about uh, life as an airline pilot. Um, so welcome, Roxanne. Hi, thank you very much. I'm so happy to be here. Um, we'll get right into it. Um, how did you start your career as a pilot? What was it like when you were young? Was it a dream to become a pilot? I know that you graduated from CAE, if I'm not mistaken. Um, tell, tell me a little bit about how it came to be that you wanted to become a pilot. It's actually, it's a, it's a funny story. Aviation is a, is a family business uh, for me. So my grandfather was um, first a uh, military pilot, and then he flew for Sabina, which was Belgian national carrier. And uh, he met my grandmother, who was a cabin crew. Back then, she had to stop flying so that they could get married, because cabin crew had to be uh, single. Uh, and then they had two daughters, my mother and another um, sister. And my mother wanted to be a pilot. She applied just right when the um, flight school in Belgium opened for women. And uh, she ended up flying for Sabina and now she's flying when well, she, she flew for so many airlines and her sister became a cabin crew. So for me, it was always all about aviation. And when I was a kid, I was not really interested in being a pilot. You know, this contradiction, you don't want to do, it, do like your parents. So I always said I would never be a pilot. But then when I was 16, my mom said, okay, your birthday gift is a glider camp in the south of Belgium. I said, yeah, okay, why not? So I went there and I started flying the glider and I was like, wow, I love it. I want to fly. This is what I want, this is what I want to do. So obviously it's totally different than uh, gliding, but this is what got me into it. So at 16, I knew I wanted to be a pilot. And uh, when I was yeah, 18, I applied at CAE and this is where I did my training. Well, that's an amazing story. Now I have one question. Did your mom and dad ever fly together? Uh, no, so my, my dad uh, has never been in aviation. It was just um, was just my mom and her, her yeah. But right. my mom did an observation fly with her own dad uh, just before he retired. Unfortunately, she joined uh, Sabina at approximately at the same time that he retired. So they never truly flew together. Um, but uh, yeah, she was in the, in the flight deck with him, which is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, I always love stories like that. You often see there's a story... Uh, at Air Canada about a mother and daughter who uh, got to fly together. And I thought it was quite inspiring um, to see that. Um, next, I wanted to ask you was, um, what do you really love about being an airline pilot? I really like the challenges. I like that it's always, uh, it's always changing. You don't go to work and do the same thing every day. You always go to a new destination or even if you fly to the same destination a few times the weather is going to be different the crew is going to be different um it's uh, just uh i don't like uh, routines i don't like to do the same thing every day wake up at the same time so i always really li like that about uh, about aviation i love traveling i like that when you you land somewhere then it's not over you're you're up for new adventures going and visiting cities. Uh, I really like um, meeting uh, people from all over the world. Uh, that's, that's really cool too. And uh, yeah, flying with different captains, uh, talking during the flight. I really like talking. <laughs> that's probably why I'm on this podcast as well. So <laughs> I really enjoy uh, sharing experiences with the crew, with the, with the whole team. And um, I should have asked you, what aircraft do you fly? Air Airbus 330. Oh wow! So that's a uh, wide body. That's some that's some fun flying, right? So you, yeah. you really yeah, get to travel quite good. a bit. Yeah. Um, you mentioned um, talking to captains and, and all that, and it just uh, comes to me. What what do you think you get from 
from you know working with a captain who might have more experience than you do you do you find that that's sort of like an extension of you know the training that you do whether in the sim or in a classroom do you find that there's a lot of value to that yeah for sure i think um the initial training as a pilot obviously is the first uh, the training that i did at cae and then the type rating the line training but then after that the training is just ongoing uh, and it's just, uh, yeah, you learn something every flight. And even captains say that. Even captains say that they will learn something from the first officers. And uh, it's just, uh, it's, it's not only uh, about aviation that I learn with, uh, with captains. It's also about life experience. It's just, it's really, really complete. I, I really like it. Yeah, it's, it's ongoing. And I think you're right that we, as we were talking about before, working for an airline and whether it's cap, you know, as a pilot or a cabin crew, there is a certain way of life that takes, I guess, some adjusting to because it's quite different to what anybody else does in a lot of ways. So you told us what you loved about your job. Now, what do you find most challenging about your job? Recently, so I have, an, I, I now have a, a baby, a, a little girl, and this is this has become my latest challenge. It's actually, I used to love going for long trips. And even though I'm, I'm married uh, and my husband is a pilot as well, so yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm keeping up with the family trend. <laughs> um, I used to, yeah, I used to love going for long trips. No, that's really hard. So it's hard being away from, uh, from my family, from my daughter for long periods of time. So that's not easy. Uh, even though I've, I've been used to it because I've, I, I grew up with a, a mother being a pilot. So I've been used to it, but experiencing, experiencing it myself now, it's, it's a lot harder. Um, what's hard as well is the, uh, the sleep, the lack of sleep and um, the completely disrupted pattern. That's really hard. Uh, waking up uh, in the middle of the night and... Um, and then sometimes landing in the morning and going again again at night, so sleeping during the day. Um, that's really that's really hard. That's something that I don't. Uh, even though I said I don't like routine, so I don't mind doing different things at different time uh, and not having the same week as everyone. The 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 lack of sleep and the the, the sleep pattern that's hard. So that's about it, I think. <laughs> and do you um, do you have flexibility with your schedule? In terms yes. of doing, whether you do long haul, short haul, you know, coming home. Uh, it's uh, a mix. It's a mix. Uh, so that's really, really nice. Actually, I really like it. I like the, the mix of operation. I like doing sometimes short haul, a uh, quick uh, turnaround, which is fun. And then the next, uh, the next day or the next week, a longer flight. Uh, that's something I enjoy. And yeah, there is a lot of flexibility with the days off, with the, with the leave. So that's a, that's a good, uh, it's a very good life, actually. Uh, it's just sometimes the, the lack of sleep can be a little uh, uh, overwhelming, but uh, they have tools for that as well. So. Yeah, I was going to ask you, what tricks do you have to sort of, you know, uh, you know, you talked about sleeping during the day, and that's, I mean, quite common, obviously, in the airline industry. What do you do to sort of help yourself through, um, you know, the, the challenges of uh, sleep patterns and whatnot? I really try to listen to my body, and if uh, if I feel the need to sleep, even if it's a uh, if it's the whole day, I just I just go for it because uh, yeah. Uh, in the beginning, when I started having layovers, I just wanted to explore and do as much as possible. And then I realized at one point my body was like, "Whoop, you need to sleep now." So now, of course, I'm still gonna go and enjoy. But first, first I sleep, and then uh, and then, then I can see how much time I have left. <laughs> <laughs> but I really try to yeah. I need a lot of sleep actually, so I try to to listen to my body with that. And uh, I guess with your with your husband being a pilot too, you often have off schedules, right? So he flies when you're not, and vice versa, and that I guess is a bit of a challenge too. Yes, but again, we are lucky that we have a, a bidding system that allows us to bid together. Uh, it's not always granted, but uh, we can. Uh, so this is how we how we make it work. We we request for the same days off for the same leave, and uh, that that way we spend a lot of time together and. Actually, the thing as, as pilots is that we have, I think, a lot more time off than other people. Uh, and of course, it's not going to be the weekends, it's not going to be the, the, the school holidays, but um, in total, we have more time off. So we actually have a lot of time together. And sometimes it's not going to be off days, but it's going to be time between flights, um, that kind of things. Um, so 
we a lot of people think we never see each other but it's not it's not true <laughs> we do we do see each other a lot <laughs> Well, it's great to have that flexibility for sure, especially that you can bid together and whatnot that makes it uh, yeah. a lot easier. Um, one thing that we've been doing with all of the pilots that we've had is we've been trying to dispel some of the rumors that, uh, that, uh, that, that exist between pilots, right? So the super glamorous lifestyle of the, the uh, business jet pilot and yeah. then the, you know, the uh some one of the ones for the cargo pilot was oh you can have tat visible tattoos and you know all of this stuff so things that you know people have in their minds that uh yeah. that are not necessarily true but we'll go through a few of them and you can tell me um what you think okay so the first one is this being an airline pilot is boring and there's very little change day to day uh, of course, I don't agree. Like I said, I think uh, it changes all the time. Um, but I know, I know some people who think that. Uh, I just, I'm never bored. I will always find the little thing that uh, that will make life not boring. So maybe, maybe that day where I'm going to the same destination as usual and the weather is clear and nothing is happening, but I'm flying with this really interesting captain who has another passion and we, we're going to talk about that. So it's not going to be boring. Or another day, the weather is going to be tricky, so we're going to have to to deal with that. So I, I don't think it's boring at all, and you have you always have something more to to learn. So yeah, for me, it's not boring. <laughs> do you think that also has to do with the aircraft you fly? The fact that uh, you know, if you were if you were flying a seven thirty seven, um, you know, doing more short haul kind of flying versus flying an A three thirty, where obviously you have a bit more range. Um, do you think that that sort of takes away from the routine? Yeah, yeah, it could be. It could be. Uh, maybe, uh, yeah, uh, pilots flying a short world and doing a lot of sectors in the day. Um, maybe that can be more boring, but actually they also have more work to do uh, because they have less time in cruise. So, uh, again, true. a little less time to be bored. Uh, I know a lot of, um, a lot of pilots, especially uh, short world pilots, think that um, when we fly long haul, we get bored because we have long cruise uh, I never got bored I always found something to do whether it was reading a manual or talking or whatever other thing I could um, I could find but um, yeah I think you 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 can always say that it's boring but uh, it's just it's a different kind of perspective I used to do my homework in between meal services on the way to Europe <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was that let me enjoy my layover when I got there. <laughs> Here's the next one. Um, all pilots do is party with the crew on layovers. Mm, well, that it, the thing is, it really depends on the airline that you're flying for. So I think that's true for a lot of airlines. Um, I guess, unfortunately or fortunately, depends on what, uh, what way you look at it. Uh, the airline that I fly for, um, we don't really have that um, crew connection, unfortunately. I mean, for me. So um, we don't have that, uh, that thing that where the whole crew always meets uh, on the layover and always has dinner and always goes out. Um, most people just go their way and don't, um, don't meet. So that's kind of sad. Uh, but of course, I've had uh, a lot of, really good layovers where we found this this crew um uh yeah uh, synergy and where where we went out so true and and false it's just uh, it depends on the airline and the people yeah i guess that makes a lot of sense um airline pilots here's another one airline pilots have longer layovers than other types of pilots depends on the airline um in in my airline it's quite uh it's quite standard most layovers are 24 hours that's not very long uh, according to some uh, other airlines um but sometimes we have one or two days off it's usually not where you want to have those days off <laughs> 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 well <laughs> um so yeah, some airline pilots have very long layovers in all those paradise uh, places. Uh, that's not that's not the case for me, but uh, it, it depends. And like I said, uh, when where I used to love having those long layovers, now 
with a baby at home, I prefer to have shorter ones. Like 24 <laughs> hours is perfect. Yeah. It's enough time to go and have a good meal and visit something and then still have some sleep before the, the return. So for me, that's perfect. And here's another crazy one. And you can choose to answer it or not. There's a lot of flirting between pilots and cabin crew. Well, everyone knows that. <laughs> <laughs> Best answer ever. <laughs> yeah, well, if you just look at the rate of, um, of marriages between pilot and cabin crew, this is just uh, what happens afterwards. I mean, most of my pilot friends are married to cabin crew. So that must have come from something. <laughs> uh, again, again, uh, depends, uh, depends on the airline. Um, like I said, again, in, in my airline, it's um, not, not really encouraged. They don't really like it. So um, I think the incidence is lower, but still, still that's true. Um, yeah. I, and I've seen it. I've seen it on so many flights. So yeah. <laughs> I, I wonder too, though, that's, I, I feel like that's also an understanding of the lifestyle, right? Like yeah. if you have a mutual understanding of how things work. So if you don't get home at six o'clock that night and you only get home two days later, you understand why that happened. Whereas yeah. for, for the regular person, that's kind of out of the ordinary and not understandable. Yes. So. Yeah. Yeah. I think it makes it easier actually. Yeah. Because, yeah, because we know, we know what it feels to just uh, fly all night and um, and be super tired. Um, where another person with a normal job maybe would be like, "Oh, let's do this and that," and they don't understand just how drained uh, we can feel. So yeah, I, I agree with you. Airline pilots don't do much flying because aircraft basically fly themselves. Yeah, it's kind of true. Um, more and more airlines uh, really encourage pilots to use uh, to use automation. So um, uh, myself, I try to to practice my hand flying skills as much as I can, and I will always ask the captain if I can uh, disconnect the autopilot earlier. Of course, uh, within the the standards in the manual, but um, but, but yeah, it's uh, automation is really recommended now by the uh, by the manuals. So I guess that's true. And I guess that has a lot to do with passenger comfort and whatnot as well, or? Yes, 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 of course, yeah. yeah. Um, next, uh, next stereotype, I guess. Being an airline pilot is super glamorous. On paper, it can be, especially when you see all those um, Instagram pilots. Uh, uh, yeah, you, 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 of course, it's like that on, on social media. You only show the good stuff, right? You show the good beach that you, that you went to on that layover and you show yourself in your uniform uh, before the flight, not after the flight where your hair is all over the place and you have red eyes. So uh, it's, it's not as glamorous as, as it's, it, it can look. Uh, no one shows the picture when you're, you are in the same at three in the morning. Uh, no one shows a picture when you're so tired in your room that you would just you 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 go in your bed and you sleep with your uniform. <laughs> so, <laughs> are you saying that airport hotels aren't glamorous? Uh, yeah, um, I'm not saying that, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that people often have that vision of, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio in Catch Me If You Can, you know, that Pan Am crew with the two pilots walking ahead and then these, you know, 10 perfect flight attendants behind walking through the airport with confidence. That always makes me laugh that, uh, yeah, that sometimes yeah. is the image that people have. Well, but this is the this is the the looks that I get when I when I w walk in the airports. I can really see that. I can see that uh, people are still uh, amazed by the uniform, and especially in my airline, we have a hat. Yeah. We have a pilot hat that you know that's really it. Really looks like a pilot uniform. Um, and then I'm a woman, so obviously a lot of them don't even know that women can fly. So it, I I can still see this job having this aura. Um, uh, but uh, no, it's nothing is ever as glamorous as you would see it in the movies or or on social media. You always have some, of course, some downsides. Um, but yeah, when you can go to a nice beach and a and a beautiful hotel for for your job, of course, that's glamorous. But 
Yeah. <laughs> and you talk a little bit about being a woman in, in, a, in an industry that frankly is dominated by, by men. I think what mm -hmm. is it, about 5% of, uh, yeah. of pilots are women. Um, and you mentioned, you know, walking through the airport and people being surprised that, oh, you know, she's wearing a pilot's uniform. Um, what has, what has your experience been um, being sort of, a, I don't want to say a young woman, uh, you know, flying back in my day, you know, the A330 would have been two gentlemen with gray hair flying. <laughs> and now I've been amazed as we've done these podcasts at how much that's changed. I think it's fantastic. But how have you experienced, you know, being, uh, I mean, it's in the family too, but being in some ways a trailblazer in, uh, in becoming a pilot? From the experience that I heard from my mom, um, it's been quite uh, and honestly it's been quite easy i haven't met um resistance or or people who who really thought that uh, a woman shouldn't fly um I, I can't say that i haven't met anyone who thought that i actually uh flew with a few captains who told me up front that i should i shouldn't be there <laughs> so so it's happened yeah uh but it's it's just a, a minority and um and what I can see mostly in our airports are people smiling to me. Uh, I've had um, I have I've had women and men come to me and tell me congratulations, thank you for doing this. You're inspiring uh, uh, young people. You're you're in you're an inspiration for kids. So I've yeah I, I think it's it's really changing. Uh, it took time, but uh, but it's changing for the best. So that's good. Uh, when I hear some of the stories that my mom. Um, had it's yeah time, times have changed um but yeah we still have work to do for sure <laughs> we still have work to do in that area well the good news is though i think that more that young girls especially see uh see role models such as yourself it opens things up much more and frankly not just young girls young boys young girls and it becomes normal after a while, yeah. which I think uh, your experience seems to, to speak to it becoming just normal, just the way things yeah. are. So I think that's, yeah. Uh, yeah. that's great. Airline pilots enjoy eating first class food. I wish it was true. Uh, back when I started uh, flying, so that was eight years ago, there was still a first class on the Airbus 330 in my airline. So I did have some caviar which was great. <laughs> I still remember, I was still in training. I was a second officer and the, the cabin crew came and she said, do you like caviar? I was like, yeah, I do. She said, no one ate it. So if you want, you can have three or four jars. Said, yeah, bring it on. <laughs> oh so goodness. I did have, yeah, well, that was great. <laughs> but that happened twice. And then they removed the first class on the 330. And uh, yeah, never happened again. <laughs> However, um, yes, if there is a leftover business class, food we always uh we, we can always choose from that uh if there is not we have the, the typical uh aircraft food it's it's a little better than the one in economy in most airlines but it's still aircraft food <laughs> um and listen i was provided these questions by renault and i'm like who doesn't like first class food like let's be honest right like <laughs> 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 uh, um, uh, okay another one here Airline pilots are constantly harassed by their friends for free flights. It's true. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's, well, you, you wouldn't feel harassed by your friends. It's usually the ones that know you but are not your friends that harass you. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, so, and, yeah, everyone thinks that we have those, uh, those free tickets for everyone that we have, I don't know, discounts. Um, we have a really, really good um, uh, system in my airline. So we can put friends, uh, family, uh, get tickets. Um, so, yeah, that, that re that's really good. So my friends have been able to, to travel, uh, a few of them in business class. So that was great. But I've had, I, I received a lot of messages from people that I was with in high school or stuff like that that I haven't talked to in 10 years and then suddenly they're like hey I'm going to wherever off on my holiday can I have a, a ticket do you have discounts for me <laughs> that's almost that's rude 
<laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> but yeah. Tell me, so in my airline days, I was able to travel to South Africa from Montreal for about $75. Um, and I was able to go for a week in Tahiti on a cruise for a fraction of what, you know, everybody would pay. What's the best thing you've done with your travel privileges and discounts? Well, I, actually, so many, so many travels. Uh, we went on our honeymoon to New Zealand. Oh, wow. Uh, with my husband. Yeah, that was amazing. Um, and then we just, we had the opportunity to travel business class for, for almost seven years. That's just, uh, it's, ne it's never something that, uh, that I would be able to afford on, uh, in a regular way. And, uh, and I wouldn't even want to pay for that, even though it's great because it's a lot of money. It's really a, a lot of money. But, um, and the, the business class of, of my airline is actually one of the best. So <laughs> That's been a great experience. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's fun. The first time after working for an airline was my very first job. And so when I left uh, that company and I had to buy a ticket to go somewhere, I couldn't believe how much it cost. Yeah. And then it was a business, uh, I was doing it was a business trip, and I'm like, I have to pay. And then I can't go when I want to. Like, I have to, like, if I want to go earlier, I have to pay. Like, it just didn't compute in my mind, you know, that, uh, that these things happen. It's funny what you get, uh, what you get used to. Yes. Yes. So here's another crazy one that you can choose to answer or not. Airline pilots are all members of the Mile High Club. Uh, no, actually, I don't know many people who are members of the Mile High Club. And, and honestly, I'm not. Uh, because um, that's not something that my airline encourages. <laughs> so we <you> don't want <laughs> to risk. For me, it's more about knowing how dirty an airplane is. I can't imagine why anybody would want to do that. Yeah, yeah, yes, it's true. It's true. Um, uh, I don't know if this is appropriate, but in in the airline that I fly for, there's a special kind of um, of business class, or maybe it would be too easy to identify. I don't know, but it's it's business class. But it looks like a, um, a first, and you can join the two center seats. All the two together, yeah. Close, yeah, close the, the sides, so it's like you are in this private booth. So in this one, I can imagine that people would uh, would try, but um, no. <laughs> but I think it's. I think they think it's private because nothing is really private on an airplane. Yes, right? exactly, <laughs> exactly. I once had I once had uh, the seatbelt sign go on and two people were missing from their seat. So now everybody's seated and these two people walk out of the bathroom and what are you going to do? I think everybody laughed more than anything, right? Yeah. You're like, oh, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. that's unfortunate for you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just a couple more. Being an airline pilot is very difficult as, uh, as passengers become more demanding. Yeah, well, I did. I, I had the, the the opportunity to fly cargo as well, so I was, I was flying mixed. I was flying cargo and uh, passenger, and I always like cargo better because just no one bothers you. And <laughs> so I have to say that I agree with the, with that statement. Uh, I once had a, a crew come to the flight deck and tell us um, that a passenger, uh, well, someone who was obviously quite rude, called her doing this, and then when she came, he said. Tell the driver to go faster. <laughs> so she said, well, it's not a driver. It's just two pilots. And they're already flying as fast as they can. So, so yeah, I've had a few, uh, a few passengers who were complaining or having crazy requests or all that kind of stuff. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's not, uh, that's not the easiest. And when you're just uh, flying boxes, uh, they don't complain. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, of course, no, not all passengers are um, are complaining. Uh, one of the hard uh, things to, to deal with is um, is medical issues, because there are quite a lot of, um, of of passengers getting sick. I've never had a medical emergency, but I have a lot of friends who had. Uh, so that's that's not easy to to deal with. And of course, that's no no one's fault, but uh, it's another thing to think about. You should have told your passenger who wanted you to go faster that a private jet is much faster. Yes. But yes. chances are he couldn't afford it. Well, actually, um, I, think, I think he could, and that's probably the problem. He was <laughs> flying, flying, so, and, yeah, so I, I think he could have, uh, he could have uh, flown uh, a private jet. For some reason, he didn't, so he was not used to going so slow. <laughs> his, his jet broke down, and he, yeah, he was like stuck. 
um, uh, we already talked about that one. Okay, so last one. Um, airline pilots barely fly at all. They're always at home. Again, depends on the, on the fleet, the airline. Um, I was at home a lot. Yeah, I was quite lucky. Uh, but it was depending on the months as well. Some months I was flying much more. So um, that really depends. You know, we can't, you can't just say that's true or not. Um, but like I said before, I think that uh, generally as pilots, we have more time off than, uh, than other people. But a lot of this time off, is spent sleeping as well. Mm. I think, I think too, though, and you can tell me if this is true or not, is that even if you do, let's say, a three-day pairing where you fly, maybe well, I'll use an example that I know, Montreal to London, London back, it's about 16 hours of flying. But you're also gone from home for between 36 and 48 hours. So while you're not working a typical 40-hour week, five days a week, and you do have more days off, the period of time that you're gone from home and that you're, you know, away is still because of your work. Yeah. So I always, uh, you know, you try to explain that to people and like, yeah, okay, I have a lot of days off, but when I'm gone, I'm gone. Yes. You're not, you're not home yeah. every night. So yeah. that, uh, I guess is the same sort of experience, uh, all around. Yeah. Um, I just want to ask you one last thing. Um, you know, we're in a bit of a weird time right now. We've gone in a very short period of time from being in a, in a, in a shortage of pilots worldwide um, to now, obviously, we're in a surplus, you know, as uh, many pilots are now grounded because of the, the situation. And, of course, we hope that's uh, a temporary thing, but at the same time, we've got a lot of people in in flight schools who are learning to fly, etc., who um, who are now wondering what's next. You know, what do do I stay in this profession? Do I pursue this dream? Um, what would you say to someone who is on a similar path to what yours was, but who now look at this environment and say, "Oh." what's going to happen? What would your advice to them be? What would your words of encouragement be? There have always been ups and downs in aviation. And, uh, and I remember when I started my training, of course, it wasn't as bad as now, but we were in a down and the classes at TAE were getting uh, reduced and not a lot of people wanted to, to start. And then uh, we all found jobs and then there was an up that came. So, so I think if, if it's your dream, uh, you, should, you should go for it. Um, maybe considering the situation right now, maybe it would be uh, clever to to study something else before keeping that in mind, something that it, that's related to aviation, and then uh, starting your the, the 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 pilot training a little later. Um, that could be an option, but I think if if someone wants to be a a pilot, they should do it because it's not it's not something that you want to regret. It's not something that you want to. To, yeah, you don't want to be in 20, 30 years where actually maybe things are going to pick up and, and you know, by then we would be like, oh, do you remember the crisis where, where things um, became better afterwards? Uh, you, would, you don't want to regret doing something else and maybe not liking your job. Uh, it's, it's such a special, a special job, a special dream. Um, I, think, I think people should hold on to it. But, uh, of course, now is a very stressful time and it's a lot of money invested. So maybe maybe give yourself uh one two years to see maybe study something else before yeah that's what i would say and i think uh just to reiterate we uh what one of our business what our business jet captain said you know he was uh he also came into it at a downturn and he started cleaning aircraft at an fbo and through that job of cleaning aircraft he met someone who knew someone who was looking for a pilot and that's how he became a pilot so I think your your take on it of studying something else related to aviation is similar in that way. It's to find yourself within the industry, immerse yourself in the industry, learn about it, and you never know who you're going to meet next who, you know, might be uh, might be helpful uh, to you. Um, the other thing I want to ask you is your mom is a, is you said your mom's a pilot, correct? Yeah. Do you work in the same airline? Yes. <laughs> and will you, will you ever have the opportunity to fly with her? Unfortunately, no. Uh, it's company policy that 
so um, that families don't fly together. Ah, I know. Tell, tell me what it would mean to you, though, to be able to do that. Uh, that would be amazing. Um, we had the chance to renew um, um, our license uh, outside of the company, so we we did a simulator together. Uh, that was really really nice. Uh, I, I really would love to to fly with her. I tried I tried to ask the management, but they said that this was the the policy and there was no way around it. So um, yeah, but uh, no, it's uh, it's it's really nice actually to to yeah to work in the same airline as her and go to dispatch and then she's there and we start talking and yeah, everyone knows us because of course the mother and daughter it's quite uh, um, it's not common. So. Right. So it's it's really really a family business in your case. It's uh, it's really amazing. Listen, Roxanne, it's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you. I think uh, you've given us a lot to uh, to think about in terms of being an airline pilot, and I think your story is just amazing at the same time, which I just think amplifies uh, the story itself. So thank you very, very much for uh, having joined us on uh, CAE Pilot and uh, we wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much. That was, it was a pleasure and I really enjoyed uh, talking with you. CAE Pilot Podcast is brought to you by CAE, the global leader in training for the civil aviation, defense and security and healthcare markets. For more information, check out CAE.com.